<laughs> Long time no see, everyone. So I am very sorry that I haven't made a video in a while. The past couple weeks, I have been completely bogged down with schoolwork and exams. And coming up into the beginning of this week, I get sick. And I still am sick, so if I sound weird, Sound like I have a deep voice. Just because I'm not feeling all that great. So bear with me. <coughs> but a lot has happened in the past couple weeks. And as I'm sure you can tell, right behind me, there is a 240 in the garage. Is it mine? I wish. But it happens to be my good old boy, Zax. And he disappeared from the garage. Where did he go? There's Zach. I was just telling everyone about your uh, your new little project you got going. My race car. Your drift car, boy. Oh, yeah. Is that a quick release or are you just... Oh, it is a quick release. Yeah, you didn't Oh, not that. bad. No, I didn't. Is there room on the roof? Yeah, you're good. Actually, you Here. <laughs> I got it. Okay. But yeah, so Zach went ahead, picked this thing up earlier last week. So we've had it here for quite a while. 93 240SX KA24 DE, so dual cam. How much did you pay, Zach? Tell everyone. $100. Oh, you no. wish. <laughs> $1,200. for a non-running 240. Now for Florida, that's really not a bad price. You typically will buy a shell for around $1,000 to $1,200. Of course, with, you know, some parts on it. And even though this thing is not running, I messed with it earlier this week when I was able to free up some time, and I was actually able to get it started. There was a check engine light, on the ECU, and because this thing is not OBD2, it's OBD1, so on the back of the ECU there's like a little red light that flashes. But I guess it had put it into limp mode and didn't want to let it start. So I cleared that code, went to turn it over, and sure enough, it started right up. Granted, it was running super rich and really didn't idle that nicely. So I did some more research, ended up testing the injectors to see if they were bad or not. Use the multimeter to test for the resistance in each one of these injectors. And sure enough, this last injector over here was reading 28 ohms compared to all of the others, which were in the range of about 14 to 15. So it's definitely bad, and that injector is probably spewing tons of fuel into the car. And in the middle of all of that work that we were doing, we somehow ended up frying the ECU. We, we didn't have any signal in the MAF or any signal in the injectors to tell us that it was communicating with the ECU. So Zach and I figured we might as well just take this whole car apart, fix all of the little tiny wiring issues. I mean, look at this, look at this ground. That's not the best ground in the world. And look at all this. It's a rat's nest. But Zach was totally on board to just basically start from scratch with this car. Do it once, do it right, huh? I guess so. Yeah. But I mean, if we can get this car up and running for, you know, a little bit less than $1,200 all in, then, you know, we'll be golden. But if Zach can sell these wheels that he really doesn't want for an easy seven to $800, plus probably, you know, a four to 500 that we're gonna have to put into it just to get it all running, we're looking at Zach having a car, a 240 of all cars, drift ready for under a grand. And that's a steal. You know what this means, right? Once you get it all uh, up and running, we're tandeming. No, and you, you see this door right here? It's gonna have a nice little tire mark. What tandem at? What cage do I have? Hey, we can do some street tandems, boy. What, what's your first video on your channel about? Not street drifting. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so we pretty much have the engine harness all labeled up. Don't really know what we're going to do. Are we going to remove it completely and then figure out what to do with the body harness? I'm not 100% sure. But Zach, he has studying he needs to do. I might toy with it a little bit more. Of course, he's taking up all the garage space. All right, so fast forward a couple hours. Way past my bedtime, Zach is probably sound asleep or studying, I don't know. But I removed all of the AC lines, AC condenser, heater hoses, AC compressor, and I'm just now trying to figure out what these relays and fuses are for. From what it looks like here, this yellow and green wire that look like they go into this relay are tapping into this spot on the fuse box and according to the cover looks like 
It's a fuel pump fuse. So I don't know if that means that the fuel pump is then running off of this relay. I'm really not all that good at wiring, so maybe, maybe one of you guys will know. But I also went ahead and removed the dash so we can gut out all of this unnecessary AC stuff. But I'll let Zach go ahead and do that. You know, I want to leave some work for him. You know, I'm sure some of you are thinking, why am I doing so much work to Zach's car when it's not even mine? It's because I enjoy it. And since I don't have any of my cars here that I can work on, this gives me something to do. Besides, I know Zach's dying to get out onto the track. So this is only helping him get there faster. Plus, I like being helpful with my friends. It's good karma. You get it? Karma? <laughs> okay, I'll see myself out. But anyways, I got class early in the morning. Maybe I'll take you guys with me. We'll see. that regularly watch my videos might be wondering why am I driving my dad's BRZ well earlier this week when I was driving back to Orlando of course because I'm in college and I gotta go to class my dad had mentioned that the BRZ was hesitating ever so slightly and sometimes throwing a check engine light and I'll tell you like the car does not boost as quickly as it should so there's definitely some troubleshooting that I'll need to do did I do it this week no Sorry, Drift Dad, but I have a pretty good idea of what it is. But right now, I am on my way to class. I have thermodynamics this morning, which is turning out to be one of my tougher classes this semester. Oh my gosh, this clutch is horrible. <laughs> uh. We're going to be introducing the topic of entropy and the effects or how entropy affects the second load. All right, so class went by super quick, thank God. And I am back home in St. Augustine, in the garage, thinking about what I should work on first. Right when I was outside of my neighborhood, the BRZ actually died on me. So I pulled the codes for the check engine light, and sure enough, it's for a MAF sensor, intake, temperature, high output, uh, and then something with the, one of the direct injectors, which makes sense because this thing has just been going through fuel. So obviously we got some things to work out with this car. Isn't that right, Nacho? Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. Oh, now you want to see me. <laughs> Good boy. For those of you wondering, Drift Dad is not home. He had to go pick up my mom from the airport. He should be back relatively soon. I'm, I know he's not gonna like the news about his car, but hey, it is what it is. So as far as other updates that I really haven't covered since I haven't been filming, last weekend I went ahead and finished up with rewiring a new relay for my electric fans. I also covered them in a nice loom. So this car should be good to go. And with the S14, last weekend I went ahead and took off my rear passenger side caliper because sure enough when I was trying to bleed the brakes I completely broke off the bleeder bolt and I have a new caliper waiting to be installed right here so I can start dailying this thing again she's a good car okay fast forward couple minutes actually hours got the new caliper in the one that I had ordered from O'Reilly's they had sent me the wrong one it was actually for the driver's side so I had to run over back to O'Reilly's return that one swap it out for a passenger side so it's good to go all I need to do is just bleed the brakes but unfortunately you know I would be doing that right now if it weren't for my stupid he's not stupid but my friend for coming over distracting me telling me to go to the beach with him we live in a beach town what do you expect <laughs> <laughs> you're right so that means we're gonna go out we're gonna go do some skimboarding but before i end this video i want to end on one clip so the last drift event that i went to where i was drifting the s13 and ended up melting all my fan wiring my friend nick was drifting and just when i was walking through the pit he came up to me said yo alan look at my rear bumper did, did i get a wall tap and sure enough he barely hit the wall and did like the most perfect wall tap. So I told him to go for it again, and this is what happened. Oh, 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 oh,
He sent it! Oh my gosh, Steven, he actually did it! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's amazing. You know what my, and my uh, uh, thumbnail is going to be, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Alan told me to tap the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to end this video with a big shout out to Nick because that was like a wall tap on demand. And maybe you could consider it a wall smash. But either way, he totally sent it when I told him to. So that deserves a little bit of credit. And for you guys to go check out his channel, Drift Rod. <clears throat> oh, man. I don't feel that good. So that's where this video is gonna end. Sorry you guys didn't get to see Drift Dad. He didn't get back in time before I left. But you guys will see him soon. And don't forget, my birthday's coming up soon. So make sure to send me your best memes through Instagram, please. Anyways, okay, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.